tonight. We have quite a crowd here. And before I start, I'd like to welcome our uh, fellow worship, uh, Ron McDermott. It's nice to see you, Ron, and thank you for contributing uh, the three terms you did. You brought a lot to this town. So thank you, thank you again for your services. So I'm going to call, I'm going to ask everybody to, to stand if you're able for the national anthem. Thank you, Your Worship. So after a lengthy search, uh, I am very pleased to welcome Mr. Kevin Gerard, our new Director of Infrastructure Services. Uh, a bit of background on Kevin. Uh, Kevin is a licensed professional engineer, holds a Bachelor of Applied Science in Civil Engineering from Lakehead University. Uh, he also has a certificate in Civil Engineering from St. Clair College uh, and is working towards his uh, Master's of uh, Business Administration, his MBA. So Kevin's, uh, uh, I've known him for a few years now. He's a highly motivated, uh, engaged engineer, and he, he brings a very practical experience um, from both the contracting and the municipal sectors that's going to immensely benefit us here at the town. Uh, I can say we're truly excited to have Kevin join our team. Uh, we look forward to him uh, growing and developing infrastructure services uh, for Essex, uh, which is only gonna help uh, council accomplish uh, the vision that they've laid the groundwork for. So welcome, Kevin. And also welcome for me, uh, Kevin. Nice to have you on board. So we're going to uh, move into uh, the closed meeting report by Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, council earlier this evening met in closed session as permitted uh, by Section 239 2D of the Municipal Act. At that meeting, I can report that council received an update concerning collective agreement negotiations with QP and the town's employees. And that's the extent of my report, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Thank you, Rob. And now we'll go in. Any conflict of interest amongst council members here tonight? Uh, I guess before we go any further, uh, I, I guess Councillor Garen, uh, you'd like to make a motion? Please. Three, three, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I'd like to request that Dave Cassidy, the president of Unifor 444, be allowed an opportunity tonight to speak to Council about the recent news regarding uh, Windsor Assembly Plant. Thank you, uh, Councillor. What's the pleasure of uh, Council here tonight? Are, uh, we... no. Councillor Bjorkman? Okay, thank you. Uh, we need a seconder. Uh, Councillor Verbeek, all in favor? It's carried, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we also need a resolution to adopt the published agenda. I, I do need to speak to two uh, small amendments. Okay, so I, I need a motion to adopt the uh, published agenda here tonight. Councillor Van Dolan and Councillor Verbeek. 
All in favor? I, no, sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just two amendments. Uh, the first one, uh, I'm hoping the council will consider adopting as amended. Uh, the first item, uh, Councilor Verbeek has requested that the notice of motion currently on uh, agenda item 15.1.1 be deferred until the March 16th meeting. And then secondly, uh, Councilor Bondi had provided a notice of motion uh, to the clerk's office um, and that for presentment tonight and, and to be debated or actioned March 16th. And so I'm, I'm looking to uh, add, add that and I, I, can re I can read that or present that uh, at the appropriate time. Okay, so we need to uh, adopt it as amended, please. Adoption as amended. All in favor? It's carried. 5.1 on this evening's agenda that the minutes of the regular council meeting held February 18th, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Have a mover, please. Moved by Councillor Bjorkman and second by Councillor Garen. Any questions on this one? All in favor? It's carried. Our first, through you, Mr. Mayor, our first presentation this evening as item 6.1 is Ms. Tracy Pringle, for account manager, municipal and stakeholder relations from the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation. She's here this evening to speak to council concerning the new assessment cycle and timelines. Good, thank you. Uh, anytime you're ready, Tracy, you can, uh, you can start. Great, great good evening and uh, your worship, members of council, administration, the media and the public. And thank you very much for making some time to hear from me this evening. I'm Tracy Pringle. I am the Zone 1 Account Manager for Municipal and Stakeholder Relations at MPAC. Property assessments provided by MPAC are the foundation of Ontario's property tax system, which generates nearly $30 billion annually in the province. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. We maintain a comprehensive database of property information for each of the more than 5 million properties in Ontario. The information MPAC gathers informs revenue and taxation decisions and can help us understand how your community is changing. At the end of last year, we delivered an assessment roll with 5.3 million properties valued at $2.96 trillion. We added over 65,000 properties in 2019 and the total value of assessment in Ontario rose by $18 billion. To respond to this growth, we've continually evolved to become more efficient and customer focused. We've also become less paper driven and digitized our processes to allow us to give and receive information in a variety of formats. We've prioritized investment in a highly qualified workforce with diverse skill sets so we can continue to innovate and evolve while delivering transparent assessments and the other services that you rely on. We're committed to working together with you to navigate changes in the world that impact your tax base and local priorities. I wanted to give you a quick look at what your assessment base looked like at the end of 2019 coming into the 2020 taxation year. A couple of highlights, you can see that residential properties make up the bulk of the Essex assessment base, followed by your farm and commercial assessments. So let's take a quick look at the property assessment and taxation system in Ontario. The provincial government passage, passes legislation governing the business rules around when and how MPAC assesses property and sets property tax policy. MPAC provides current value assessments upon which municipalities tax to provide a revenue stream for services delivered to residents. The Assessment Review Board is an independent tribunal that is part of the Environmental and Land Tribunals Ontario Cluster reporting to the Ontario Ministry of the Attorney General and this body is the body that hears the assessment appeals from property owners. Property owners of course are key because they pay the ever important property tax bill. So we're going to talk a little bit about how, how we assess properties and assessment methodology depends very much on the type of property being valued. There are three main approaches uh, industry-wide that are used, uh, not just in this province, but across the country. The first is the direct comparison approach, where we take recent sales of comparable properties and analyze them to provide an indication of value for similar properties through this approach. Most residential properties are assessed using the direct comparison approach. The income approach 
uh, is tied to the ability to earn revenue on the real estate, not necessarily the business that may run from there. So for example, the property owner, uh, landlord that rents to Walmart, the income approach is on the rent for the Walmart, not on what Walmart itself can make, if that makes some sense for you. The third, uh, third way is the cost approach, and this is when a property is unique and rarely sold or traded on the market. We can't rely on sales and we can't rely on income. In these cases, the property's value is estimated as the current cost of reproducing or replacing that building, structures, or other taxable components of the land. We typically see this approach in general purpose uh, industrial properties, crane elevators, gravel pits, marinas, and warehousing. So current value assessment, value-based value assessment systems um, such as this one are the most commonly used approach to property assessment. It's the assessment model used in every province in Canada and in many countries around the world. All properties in Ontario are assessed using a common date known as the valuation date. Current value assessment reflects the real estate and economic markets as of the valuation date, which is a specific legislated point in time for this assessment update is January the 1st, 2019. To determine a property's current value assessment, we analyze recent sales of similar properties in the area to establish a value that reflects the price a property might reasonably be expected to sell for in its current condition as of the valuation date. In addition to comparing residential properties to similar properties, there are other factors that we take into consideration when assessing residential properties. Five factors make about 85% of a home's value, and that includes the location, the exterior square footage, size of the lot, how old the building is, adjusted for depreciation, and the quality of the construction. So I'm gonna talk for just a second about what you're gonna to need to know for the 2020 assessment update, which is happening this year. Every four years, we update the assessed value of every property in the province. We assess every property as of the same valuation date, which is set by the provincial government, as I mentioned. We continue to review properties during non-assessment years as new homes are built, owners renovate, structures are demolished, or properties change use. This is how we deliver assessment value for all of the properties in your community. As you can see, 2020 is an assessment update year. As I mentioned, an impact date is January the 1st, 2019, so all values will be um, against that specific date. Municipalities will use these assessed values to calculate taxes for the 2021 to 2024 property tax years. So you can see that this uh, slide demonstrates the valuation date is the 29th. This year the notices will be mailed to everybody. Your new tax will come in starting 2021 for the next four years. One of the things that the province put into place is called phase-in. This is to mitigate sort of large increases and allow it to be spread out over a, a period of time. It is spread over the entire phase of four years. So for example, if a property increases in value, that value is split up equally over those four years. If a property decreases in value, that decrease is taken immediately. So when the property owner sees their updated assessment value on the property assessment notice as part of their 2020 value, phase-in information will be included on the notice as you can see here on the screen. So for example, this property had been 325,000 at the last assessment. It is now worth 350,000, which is a $25,000 increase. That value will be phased in for taxation over each of the four years by $6,250 per year in a simple example. So we wanna make sure that the tools we provide um, are helping you support your constituents and will meet your needs. Our municipal liaison group meetings, which is comprised of municipal representatives from across the province, and including some members from the town of Essex, municipalities have told us that they want to be involved in the update. They wanna be part of the conversation, not just the recipient of updated values. They want information early and often. So we're making sure that we have a comprehensive webinar schedule. We are putting out um, newsletters and information all the time, and I will show you how you can follow along with that as a counselor. 
So some details of the support we're providing. Property owners will be able to find information about their own assessment and Ontario's property system on our website, mpac.ca, through our social media channels, and they will also have access to About My Property, or they can call our customer contact center. For municipalities, throughout the year, we'll be uh, sharing insights about the assessments provincially, regionally, and locally. We're attending council presentations just like this one uh, and meetings with municipal staff on a regular basis. We'll also send you several toolkits throughout the year with website and social media content that you can share through your channels. We'll provide key messages and information to help your frontline staff answer property questions and know when to refer them to MPAC and we'll work with you on any issues that arise in the media. Although this is an assessment update year, you still have our commitment that we continue to focus on our regular work throughout the year, including new assessment, building permits, and meeting our service level agreements. So our property uh, mailing schedule, any of you who remember the last update, we did stagger those over a 21-week period. That was to allow um, property owners to get their heads around it, to make sure that we had enough staff and we were staggered enough that we could deal with anybody asking for a reconsideration on their property that we were able to respond. And property owners have a rolling deadline to request a reconsideration in the first year only. Following years, it will revert to the March 31st deadline for reconsideration of property. So for example, we're in the fourth year of the current cycle. Property owners have until March 31st of this year this month to put in a request for reconsideration on their property should they feel that their value is too high. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see that your notice mailing schedule here, uh, notices for this area will be mailed to property owners on September the 3rd. Their request for reconsideration deadline will be January the 4th of 2021. Business properties and farm properties will be mailed later in October, and any other notices will be mailed at, in uh, November, at the end of November. In terms of About My Property, this is a secure self-service application that will help property owners learn more about how we assess their property. If you get questions from your constituents about their assessment, we encourage you to direct them to mpac.ca and About My Property for them to learn more. One thing I should mention to you as counselors, um, as MPAC employees, we are precluded from speaking about anybody's property with anybody but the owner or a registered agent. So if you have uh, constituents coming to ask you for support, you can certainly give us that information, but we would have to deal directly with the constituent and would, of course, follow up with you at the end of the conversation to let you know that it has been resolved. Excuse me. Once they get into um, About My Property, they can look at their own profile report with detailed information about their property. They can access 100 property snapshots to compare assessment details of properties in their neighborhood, and they can save 24 of these in a favorite report. This information is used then to submit their request for reconsideration should they feel that we have misvalued their property. So residential property owners who feel that the assessed value or property classification is incorrect can ask us to review it free of charge we suggest that property owners follow these steps if they have concerns. The first question they'll need to ask themselves is could I have sold my property for the assessed value on my notice as of January the 1st, 2019? And if the answer to that is yes, then that assessment should be treated as correct in terms of the market value and what that home would fetch, which is what our assessments are based on. <clears throat> the fastest way to start the review is to re submit a request for reconsideration through the About My Property tool that I've just described. We will also accept requests for reconsideration by mail or by fax and forms are available on our website or in our office. If a property owner is not satisfied with the outcome of the request for reconsideration, they do have the option to file an appeal with the Assessment Review Board and the board charges $75 per roll number for residential properties to file that appeal. In zone one, I'm your account manager. Um, my boss, Amanda McDougall, is the regional manager who takes care of all of zone one. And we do have offices throughout the area. The locus, locus, uh, excuse me, closest local office is on Manning Road in Tecumseh. So in order to connect with us, every month we do send out a newsletter called In Touch. You can certainly sign up for that on our website if you would like to um, receive that as counselors. 
Um, we also hold monthly webinars on a range of topics and you're welcome to attend. They are on the first Wednesday of every month at one o'clock. Registration details and recordings are shared um, within the InTouch newsletter. You can follow us on social media and please don't hesitate to contact us um, if you have questions. We're always here to help. That concludes the formal part of my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions anyone may have. Thank you, uh, Tracy, for your presentation. I, I just got one quick thing. If you go back, this assessment is going to be increased over the next three years? Four years, sir. Four years. Okay, yes. thank you. I'm going to uh, open it up to council. Uh, councilors have any questions at all? Councilor Bjarkman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for your presentation and for being here to see us today. A lot of our residents have questions about their impact assessment. Um, none of us think our house is worth as much as, as you do, um, but that's the nature of the business. Um, when you go to step four and you've decided that you're going to request for reconsideration and you, you are told, no, we're not going to change it, and you move on to the challenge of appeal, who runs that challenge of appeal? Like who, what, what body is that that we're appealing? So the assessment review board is the independent tribunal and they would make any decisions when a property owner is appealing their assessment. They are one of the parties in the appeal. The other parties would be MPAC and the municipality. Okay, so one of the things I'm wondering is we're gonna charge people $75 to file an appeal. If they win that appeal, then they should have been taken care of in step four at the free reconsideration. So I'm thinking like anybody who wins at step five shouldn't have to pay $75 for something they should have gotten in the first place. People who uh, are participating in appeal have the opportunity to ask for costs within their award. Okay, so they can do that? They can request it. I don't them. know what the um, instances of the province granting that, but they are allowed to ask for that. Okay, and my other question is back to the assessment base. Uh, there's two uh, commercial um, Settings. There's commercial and then there's commercial new construction. Yes, sir. And, and the difference is pretty great between 4.62% uh, to 98. I'm just wondering, what is the difference between those two? So commercial new construction is for properties that were, the building permit was issued on or after a specific date as set by the province. And the difference is in the educational tax rate. They pay a slightly different tax rate in the newer construction than they do in the old construction. At no point does a building come out of the new construction. It is a timed thing. Okay, so this was, so construction before Correct, say it's 2012. pretend it's January 1st, 2012. Before that is that rate. After that is in the new category that the province laid out as a tax class. And that's where that leap in the education assessment comes in. Well, there's a difference in the actual rate that the province right. charges, I believe, within that assessment. And actually, probably okay, so somebody from your date. finance team can confirm how that works out in your tax rates. Okay, thank okay. you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Anybody else from Council? Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is, um, well, more of a thank you for coming, but my question is more for our Director of uh, Finance. As a municipality, I, people are really panicking that our residential taxes are going up. So, you know, they want to know, is the mill rate going down? Like, what tool do we have as a, as a municipality? We can bring it down, we can bring it up. Can you tell us what you foresee for 2022 with what we've, or 2021, sorry, with what we've been doing? Through the chair. Thank you for the question. So, with the assessment increasing, the levy will decrease. So you'll have shifts between class, and the classes are up there, uh, residential, multi-res, commercial, industrial. You'll have slight shifts between those class, but most of those shifts um, in what individuals pay will fall within that class. So if assessment overall in the area goes up 40%, and your assessment goes up 40%, you'll pay the same technically as you paid the year before. But if your assessment goes up above that 40%, you'll pay more in tax. If your assessment goes down more or below that 40%, you'll pay less. So we will have the tools to adjust the levy to accomplish that. Okay. Councillor Bowman. Uh, just wanted to thank Tracy for coming again this uh, year. You, know, you make uh, periodic stops by. And, and I think um, uh, how impact works and how it affects our taxes is probably one of the most misunderstood uh, things that we are involved with from a, 
a municipal uh, standpoint and the more information we get out to our our constituents and uh, programs that you provide uh, more enlightenment to the general public so they understand how it works and um, what the uh, uh, changes mean to them so I think as long as we keep doing this and and have these uh, type of forms where this information get out it's great uh, nobody likes their taxes going up and they always seem to think if my um, assessment goes up my taxes are going up not always so but uh, th um, that's perception out there and uh, I think it, the more of this information gets out the better it is so thanks again thank you councillor anybody anybody else from council Jeff, would you like to comment on that? Um, through the chair, just to add to that, we're also going to be working on uh, information campaigns surrounding the assessment cycle. Um, we're potentially going to have some open houses where MPAC and Town of Essex finance staff will be available, whether it's in council chambers or another location where individuals can stop in and ask those assessment related questions and we can take the time to explain it and walk them through. So. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody else? Once again, thank you, Tracy, for the presentation, and I need a motion from Council to receive the presentation, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Vanendel, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. And next, um, Mr. Dave Cassidy, uh, you want to step forward? Anytime you're ready, Dave, you, you can get a start. Thank you, and thanks, uh, Councillor Garon, for bringing that forward. I appreciate it. Um, I'm here today, obviously, um, with last week's uh, bad news that broke on February 27th, announcing the elimination of our third shift at Windsor Assembly Plant. In Essex alone, there's approximately 3,500 active and retired members, uh, just from my local alone. Um, I've been able to obviously have some discussion with Chris Lewis, uh, Brian Moss, and Ira Kuzmerchuk, along with our MPPs locally here, which is very important for us moving forward. We are losing jobs, and we're losing out on new investment. Since 2006, 10 of the 16 bids to build new automotive manufacturing plants in North America were won by Mexico, with the remaining six going to the southern U.S. Between the years of 2009 and 18, automotive companies spent $124 billion on investment. Of that money, only 7% went to Canada. I'm asking the council here today, and it's pretty simple, and I don't know if you can get your head around it, but to write a letter collectively, we need a Canadian auto policy, a manufacturing policy. Whether it's through procurement, we need to make sure that we keep these corporations from reaping tax benefits and then moving away from Ontario and Canadian jobs. So truthfully, that's all that the ask is here today. The devastation that's going to happen on June the 29th is not only going to affect those 1,500 potential members at Windsor Assembly Plant, but all of our feeder bases as well. And for every one OEM job, is at the Windsor Assembly Plant is 10 spin-off jobs in our communities. So when I see this impact that went on here today, I can just imagine what, what's going to happen in some of these municipalities. And I am going to go around, I, hopefully Wednesday maybe I can just get into County Council. And today when I put the letter together and spoke with um, the three MPs, we had the discussion that I'm going to go around to all the municipalities and hopefully they can endorse a letter to send off to government as well. So. That's it that I have, and thank you for, the, for allowing me the time. Thank you, Dave, and I agree 100% with what you're saying. We, and uh, I haven't got a problem at all sending a letter of support out to, uh, to uh, senior levels of government. We have to have some type of policy, some type of policy to protect our jobs in the area. I'm gonna open it up to uh, council. Is there any, any questions from council? Go ahead, Councillor Verbeek. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, 
Thanks, Mr. Cassidy, for coming out. And um, I'm just going to make the motion right away that we, as council, send the letter to the federal government asking for um, requesting an auto policy. Um, and um, pardon me. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to make the motion. Thank you, uh, Councillor Verbeek, and it's seconded by Councillor Garen. Any other discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And I agree 100%, Dave, what you're saying. Thank you. I need a motion to accept the presentation, please. Uh, Councillor Garen and Councillor Bjorkman, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Eight point one on the agenda is community services twenty twenty oh three in reference to renaming the Essex Community Center to the Maydell Community Center uh, for a receipt and that council will approve uh, the renaming of the Essex Community Center. Uh, and and to that, Mr. Mayor, I believe our deputy CAO uh, Doug Sweet has a few comments. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Community Service Department has three recreation facilities in Essex Center and all have similar names. The Essex Recreation Complex, the Essex Community Center, and the Essex Center Sports Complex. As the facility names are very similar, it has created confusion on what location people have rented or registered a program at. To rectify this issue, administration has worked with the Towns Heritage Committee to put forth a historical name significant with Essex Center as a potential new name for the Essex Community Center. However, the recommended name change is coming forward without public input, so I'm recommending that council to further report one month until we can get the public's input on the potential name change. Thank you, uh, Doug. Any other uh, questions? Uh, Councillor B. Arkman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I can just speak to that, um, being on the Heritage Committee, one of the things we were looking to do was to honor the Medell family and the, the the history that's here in this town because of them. Um, so we started with that, and as we started working through it, what would be good to rename, and we knew that we needed to do something with the, uh, I can't even think of the right name right now, the Recreation Center. Um, so it would be a perfect uh, mix there. It's down the road from the Midel plant. Um, they started out on Main Street on Talbot, uh, where Essex Appliance is now. So there was a lot of, um, everybody got behind it. It's a great idea, but then it was the idea of, okay, we're suddenly now naming a building in the town of Essex, and we haven't gone out and got other um, ideas and made sure that there's, there's proper uh, community involvement there. So that's one of the reasons that we've backed off to this point, and that's the best thing to do, uh, which the director has said, to uh, put that out to the public and make sure that we've got input from everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other uh, councillor? So I'd like to know from Council uh, what their pleasure is on this one. Uh, Councillor Bjorkman, uh, did you? Okay, uh, Okay, I need a seconder for that. Uh, Councillor Van Andel, any discussion? All in favor of that? It's carried. Thank you. Eight point two this evening is planning twenty twenty oh four re one eight three oh four three Ontario Limited rezoning application. That said report be received and that council authorize the submission of a rezoning bylaw for approval by council to permit multiple unit dwellings within the lands identified as the Gianni Estates subdivision in accordance with the recommendations of development services as set out as set out in appendix A to this report. Thank you, Rob. I, I need a motion to receive it and uh, approve the recommendations, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Guerin, any questions? Councillor uh, Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wonder if any other councillors or if the planning department got concerns about the six stories high. Um, I did get one concern. I'm just wondering if our planning department did get any. Go ahead, Lori. Through you, Mr. Mayor, thank you. And Councillor Bondi, since the presentation, uh, the public meeting, technically, we have not received any correspondence. And as you witnessed during the public meeting itself, we didn't receive any uh, concerns either. Uh, if the member of the public would like to submit uh, that uh, information, they're welcome to, to still submit. However, the, uh, the resounding um, input that we received is that it's quite uh, well received and, and 
folks are looking forward to another option for uh, another housing option in the form of apartment style, uh, maximum six stories. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Verbeek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did get some feedback from the community and all of it was a re resounding um, uh, positive. Um, very happy to hear that we're moving forward with uh, more housing uh, in the town center. Thank you, Councillor Bjorkman. Yes, thank you, Ms. Mayor. I was wondering, can we, can we put that, the picture up? We've got a drawing of it in the, uh, in the notes, um, just so that people that are here can see, uh, even with the full subdivision added in the... So it's the, the purple area that they're looking at. So it's, it's across uh, a pond, a green space, across from the ball diamonds, uh, where that space is, which I think is, is ideal. Um, the new development is going to be in behind it. The Hamlin extension will be there to take out. And with the, uh, with the roundabout at Arner is going to make a much better flow of traffic. I just think to develop the area, to get the, the people into town that we want, it's, a, it's an ideal location. So I think it's terrific. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Anybody else from Council? Uh, before I, uh, I'll, I'll just say to the public out there, this is a beautiful, beautiful development, a beautiful building. Uh, we were all excited at Council, and I think the uh, public that was present was very excited when they seen it. It's a beautiful development for the town. It's in the right location. It's close to, very close to the arena, very close to shopping uh, right here at this end of town. So um, it's, like I say, I support it 100%. So Lori, you had uh, something to add? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think those are wonderful comments. Thank you to everyone. Uh, what I, I do want to clarify tonight is that we are seeking council's uh, approval to proceed with preparing that bylaw. So as a part of our report to council, you'll see that there is a proposed bylaw and that is site specific. It still allows for single, semi and towns. However, it is for that triangular portion only rec recommending the addition of multi-residential in the form of this apartment style complex or a condominium style complex, maximum six stories, maximum number of units, uh, etc. So again, looking at that triangular piece and so you will see, uh, should you proceed with recommending approval tonight, um, a bylaw in the near future to, to pass that. The next step beyond that would be uh, when the applicant is ready to proceed with site plan control, which then allows us to take a look at ingress and egress, uh, you know, fire safety routes, number of parking spaces, etc. Thank you, uh, Lori. Anybody else uh, from council? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion. Yeah, yeah I need every, all in favor. It's carried. 8.3 this evening is Communications Report 2020-01, Relaunch of Essex Works Online Report, re, sorry, Online Report a Problem System for Citizens. And for our presentation to Council this evening, we have Alex Denonville, our Manager of Communications. Alex, anytime you're ready. Greetings, Council, through the Chair. Thank you for having me tonight. Uh, I know most of you around the table know me, but if you don't know me in the audience, I'm Alex Nonville, the uh, Manager of Communications for the Town of Essex. And I'm thrilled to be here tonight to launch the Essex Works Online Report a Problem system. Uh, I have been working closely with our staff and managers, and uh, it's really exciting to launch this new system. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about, about it tonight and uh, launch it formally for the public and all the media here to cover it. A bit of background. As you may recall, in March of 2019, the province distributed funds to municipalities to assist with modernizing service delivery and finding operational efficiencies. The administration identified our current um, problem reporting system as a potential venue or avenue to invest those funds. Um, previously, um, citizens were required to call into town hall or visit a community facility to report a problem. Uh, our staff, like our dedicated staff, Lynn here would uh, then delegate or uh, inform the res responsible manager or even uh, enter that information into CityWorks, which is our uh, digital service request system. Um, 
so then, uh, basically, the manager would uh, delegate that uh, those duties, and the infer and the work would be completed, and then that would be it. So that would be the end of um, the submission of a report or problem. Uh, the citizen wasn't informed if the work was done. The citizen wasn't informed if the work couldn't be done. So it was kind of uh, they gave us a call, and then that was the end of their interaction. So we've got a, a new system here uh, with the online tool. So basically, it's a it's a one-step process for the citizen, and they'll receive uh, two or three emails. So essentially, uh, we're going to use a problem, say a problem at the Essex Center splash pad. I'll, I'll go through an example after this, but uh, say there's low pressure at the Essex Center splash pad. Um, the citizen would log into the system and submit the information. Uh, again, I'll go through it. And then uh, they would, after the information's been submitted, they receive a confirmation email that includes a service request identification number. So that's an independent number for every problem that's been submitted. Uh, the manager would also receive that confirmation email and then the information about the problem is integrated into the CityWorks system, which we currently use. It's, uh, if the problem can be fixed right away, it's likely that the manager would delegate that, uh, that work, the, information, or the problem would be addressed, and then uh, the, the manager would go into CityWorks identify it as closed, and then the citizen would receive a, com a confirmation email that the work has been completed. If the work can't be done right away, the manager will uh, input information into CityWorks uh, to say, you know, uh, we're working on getting a new part, say, for the splash pad. It's going to be here in three to four weeks, so we'll let you know when, once it's complete after that. So again, uh, we're really closing the loop. So when citizens submit information, and we think it's really important that they're informed when the problem has been addressed or if, it's, if we're unable to address it. Uh, so this is what the citizen will see. I'm going to flip to the actual form online. So again, uh, you can choose your problem type. So this uh, is about uh, nine categories, uh, very general categories that can uh, kind of uh, encompass all of the problems that uh, we foresee accepting through the system. You can add images. Uh, you'll enter your first name, your last name, your address, phone number, email address, where the problem is located, um, kind of more specific location details, and then any other additional details about the problem. So once all that's filled out, you know, it takes could take five minutes, um, five to ten minutes if you have uh, lots of information. You submit that problem and then you'll receive a confirmation email like the one here. And then again, like I said, once the work has been updated or uh, completed, they'll receive another, uh, another email. So benefits, there are really no drawbacks as the uh, report uh, included. It was uh, $6,000 initial expenditure. We don't have any, it doesn't increase our operating budgets. It's pretty much, we've paid it already, so the, the system is paid for. Uh, it really does improve access and improve our customer service. So right now, um, if someone wants to submit a problem after hours, they can call and leave a message. Uh, now they can submit it online and then be updated as the work is completed. Um, it also allows for uh, consistent and standardized tracking. Uh, so it really um, push CityWorks adoption throughout the corporation and we'll be able to see, you know, um, how long are issues uh, taking to get fixed or kind of where are the gaps so we can get an idea of our average response time and that will inform uh, improving our customer service in the future as well. Uh, it also maintains our current options for reporting. So I understand, you know, not everyone has access to a computer. Uh, not everyone feels comfortable about logging in and submitting all of their information. So you can still call or you can still visit our facilities and we'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, the system's also mobile friendly, so you can use your smartphone and it can also be integrated into other systems. Um, for example, you know, if we launch a mobile app in the coming years, that can be directly integrated. So it's a, a very simple form uh, for our citizens and it can be used in uh, a lot of capacities. So again, I'd like to thank you again for welcoming me here tonight and um, we're proud to launch EssexWorks uh, online report a problem. Uh, the form and relevant information is available now online, uh, essex.ca slash report a problem. I'd encourage you to uh, check it out, share the information with your citizens. Obviously, I'll be sharing that information with our uh, friends in the media and on our social media and website, and, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Alex. Any questions from Council? Councillor Verbeek.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Alex. This is exciting. This is I'm I'm really grateful for all the work that you have done on this, and I'm excited to see it get up and running. My question is, um, so at, uh, certainly out of the gate, the first while, this is going to be driven by councillors directing our constituents to use it, right? Um, and I'm is there is there an option to tag a um, the councillor attached to it? So so I'm following up for residents that uh, you know and. I just want to know that that's been taken, that what they're seeking has been, they've, they've received the assistance they need or the job has been complete. Is there a way to attach the counselor that's, um, you know, that's... In, in terms of, um, sorry, through the chair, uh, in terms of notification of the submission being made, uh, we don't have that ability right now, but once it's submitted, the, sur the independent uh, service request ID is the uh, number that you'll use to track. So if you had, uh, if I submitted a, uh, a problem about the Essex splash pad, the, the email that I receive, I can go back a little bit. Uh, it, see this request number at the top, at the top left, 6541. Um, that is related to the problem that I've submitted. So if I call, if I was to call uh, town hall and say my request number is 6541, um, one of our staff could look it up and see where it where it's at or who it's been delegated to to double check on that. Thank you. So, um, so could I just access using that number online if the resident gives me the number at just you know so I'm not calling Kevin and saying how's this what's the status of that you know or. At this point, it would be calling our staff okay. to check on the status. Okay. Yep. Just checking if that was an option. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Van Endel. Uh, thank you. Through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks, Alex, for the report. Uh, you, say, you say here in the report, citizens will be able to submit. Actually, I've got like three or four questions in a row. Uh, but they'll still be able to complain in the old-fashioned way, correct? Through the chair, absolutely. Yep. Um, it, when will uh, this become a required reporting process, or is it open-ended that people will still be able to call? At this point, it's open-ended. Um, I think it's important to provide different avenues of, of problem reporting. You know, uh, you have the problem of the digital divide. Not everyone has access to computers. Um, so I think it will be important to maintain some of those, those avenues. Uh, but this is definitely an option that we'd like to be um, pushing. Then that leads to my last two. Uh, could someone else fill out this online form for people who are, are on the other side of the digital divide? Absolutely, yeah. Like I said, um, if, if you're not comfortable or if you don't have the technology, um, you're still able to call our staff and it can be done so they can fill it out on your behalf or they can enter in information into CityWorks directly. If they inf enter that information directly into CityWorks, the citizen wouldn't be provided the update after. Um, can a councillor fill this out or would that be ill-advised? Through the chair, I think uh, councillors are citizens and they're more than welcome to uh, submit their problems. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Any, uh, councillor Gehring? Through you, Mr. Mayor. So, will it be eventually able, we'll be able to go in there as, as uh, councillors to look at work that's being done in our ward? Is that something we will be able to attach? Uh, through the chair, that's not um, a discussion that I, that's not a topic that I'd considered. Uh, it's something that would warrant further discussion. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that if it's possible because it's not the easy way to follow our, within our wards. It, does the application, because it's pretty small, I couldn't see in there, does it ask for um, you to put what ward you live in on it? Through the chair, it's not ward based, it would be location based. It doesn't ask where you live. Uh, Councillor B. Arkman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I think it's great. This is the first uh, tangible benefit we have from the Municipal Modernization Fund, which is nice. We, we, were, we weren't sure whether or not this was something that uh, we wanted to get into, and it obviously uh, it's freeing up some, some funds that we can do things better for our, our uh, residents. I think the best part of this is that it's got tracking attached to it. It's so important that people know that they sent in an inf information, they asked a question, and it's automatically going to get back to them. When something happens, that will get back to them. And that is always the difficulty for us closing the loop when we're dealing with our residents. So that to me is, is, is worth uh, getting into all of this because they will get that reinforcement that something happened and, and it was taken care of. So it's excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? Uh, Chris, you, you want to... Uh... Yeah, if I can. 
say a couple words? Uh, thank you, Through Your Worship. I just think it's an opportune time here to highlight, you know, the last two reports that Council's just dealt with, really tied to this corporate strategic plan that, that this Council worked hard and passed. Um, you know, the rezoning of the properties uh, and the Gianni Estates is vital to create that the homes and, you know, that friendly and inclusive community that we're looking for. Uh, what Alex presented on, on Essex Works ties to one of those values in terms of your citizen and customer experience. So we're working hard to achieve those things that you guys set out to do within that corporate strategic plan. Uh, you know, improve those experiences for both citizens and customers. This is something that we feel that, that we've lacked on, that, that touch point, that return uh, to close the loop. And, 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 you know, although we don't want complaints, right, we know we're going to get them. And we want to be able to address them in a transparent manner and ensure those uh, residents that we're, we're dealing with them and, and we're, we're closing that loop in a timely fashion. So I, I think it's kudos to Council. Uh, you know, we're moving ahead. Uh, and we will continue to do so. so good. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else? Once again, thank you for the report. Uh, I, I think council needs to uh, receive the report. I need uh, a mover to receive it. Uh, Councillor Guerin and Councillor Bowman. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Eight point three, sorry, eight point four on the agenda this evening is legal and legislative services, twenty twenty oh one. Re regular council meeting, live streaming, and webcasting. That said, report be received. That council direct administration to enter into a three month trial with the existing service provider, uh, in reference to live streaming uh, and webcasting services. And finally, that administration uh, be directed to further research the closed captioning requirements that must be complied with by January 1st, 2021, and report back to Council on options together with financial implications. <clears throat> Over uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Verbeek, any discussion on this one? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Item nine on the agenda, any reports from our youth council members this evening? Councillor uh, Susi, nothing, okay, thank you. Item 10, any updates from county council? No, nope. no updates at this time. Item 11, correspondence to be received, that the correspondence items listed in agenda item 11.1 .1 be received and we're indicated to further share with the community. If I uh, may speak, go ahead. Uh, I, I would like, uh, the one I'm, uh, I'd like uh, Laurie to speak on is the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, correspondence, please, if you can. Go ahead. If through you, Mr. Chair, uh, I uh, see Mr. Bill Baker's in the audience. Um, he's a, a member of the uh, Harrow Chamber of Commerce. I'm an alternate member. I missed the last meeting where this happened, but I understand he has a few things to say about this, and I certainly would like to hear it because this, uh, as we know, this uh, climate change committee has the potential to have huge impact on, uh, on our manufacturing operations. and. And our three biggest manufacturing outfits are all in Harrow and members of the Harrow uh, Chamber of Commerce. So I'd like to hear what he has to say about the fact that, uh, in fact, Harrow doesn't have a representative on this group. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, what's the pleasure of Council? Are, are we willing to uh, listen to uh, Mr. Baker? I'll need a motion then. Uh, uh, you'll make the motion. I need a seconder on that motion to allow him to speak. Uh, Councillor Bowman, all in favor? Carried. Bill, if you'd like to step forward. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council and administration. I think um, the letter speaks mainly for itself in terms of our um, actually disappointment. Uh, we we were approached um, by. Uh, a uh, representative from the uh, uh, town in terms of the who's heading up the uh, the um, uh, climate adaption team we were asked to uh, submit our our interest to be involved and to appoint a representative uh, well first of all we want to commend 
uh, administration and council for setting this up because we do think it's a very important initiative. Um, and we just want to kind of express our disappointment given the fact that the Harrow Chamber of Commerce does represent, Harrow and Colchester South represent all the sectors in terms of that you've asked for in terms of uh, representing the business community in all the sectors. While being asked to submit an application and, and put forward a representative, we were somewhat disappointed in the fact that we were not even on the short list that was submitted by administration. Uh, this uh, raised concern with our members and with our, with our, um, our executive committee in the fact that the name put forward, and it was myself, um, does have uh, significant uh, experience in terms of the background uh, relative to municipality, um, also involved in climate change initiatives in the past. We just kind of was seeking our interest in, in the fact that the Harrow Chamber of Commerce has been around for a century now, representing business uh, for Colchester, Harrow, and, and working with the town of Essex as well. And we do thank you for our support, your support in the past. We just kind of need an explanation as to why that we have we were not c considered on the shortlist. Um, the representation, while you may have selected some individual sectors, the voice of the business community is represented by the Chamber of Commerce. So I guess we just need to know what it is we uh, were not selected for. Um, we do realize that we have been uh, presented the uh, agenda and that we can at, uh, attain, uh, attend the meetings, but yet we're not involved in the committee. So that was really our concern brought forward by our members and brought forward by the executive uh, as to a further explanation. Again, we do support the initiative. We think it's very important. Um, and we're here just for looking for some explanation. Thank you, uh, Bill. If uh, Lori can respond, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, uh, I can begin by indicating that there are going to be many opportunities for our target groups, including the Harrow Chamber, uh, rather the Harrow and Colchester South Chamber of Commerce, to provide an avenue for public and stakeholder input. We have uh, a communications and consultation plan that identifies multiple opportunities throughout this next year. Uh, and so if an individual group, a target group, or an individual uh, themselves would like to participate in helping to shape this climate adaptation plan, there will be opportunities. Um, just to name a few, the consultation and communication plan identifies not only the quarterly ECAT meetings, which is the Essex Climate Adaptation Plan meetings, which are open to the public. Notices have gone out for those. Uh, that meeting is this Thursday. We also have um, quarterly updates to council. We have an online survey, public information events that will be open to the public and notices will be provided for that. And then also our social media updates that can have the back and forth, um, um, sorry, two way uh, collaboration. So um, I would like to just point that out first and foremost. As for the committee itself, uh, we received, and which is something that is not new to council, I did describe this last meeting, we received over 50 applications. Those applications were uh, quite impressive. Uh, we needed to narrow down based on qualifications, experience, and what those individuals could bring to the table to help us, administration, prepare that adaptation plan. The adaptation plan ultimately will, uh, council will um, adopt that plan. It is council's plan. It represents the town of Essex's best interests. Uh, we have a member of council as well that's been appointed to that uh, committee. And so um, it, it was a very onerous task, but at the end of the day, we needed to ensure that um, all voices across all sectors were represented. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, uh, Councillor Van Andel? Through, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I'm just uh, worried that um, that there might not be enough consultation and closely enough with basically our, our industrial base. I mean, this this climate change adaptation has to do, I'm sure, with uh, the use of, of you know heat and welding and paints and solvents. And who's going to be speaking for Atlas Tube? Who's going to be speaking for Delta and Selic and Enerquest? You know, like. That's basically all the industrial jobs in the community, and I just don't see that there. If the chamber is not represented, that I don't see that their voices will be close enough to the meat of this report. And how I'm just worried it's going to affect our jobs. Frankly, thanks. <clears throat> Thank
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I just think I'm listening to Mr. Baker had to share with us. If we as a town went to the chamber and asked them to put a name forward to represent the chamber as we were looking for names for our committee, then I don't, I wasn't part of the selection uh, committee, but I would think that that name coming forward should have had a little, an asterisk beside it that didn't just say a name, it says Herald Chamber of Commerce. And if, if it's just an arbitrary number that we came with, with how many people are going to be on this committee, then just let's increase it by one. Let's have the representative of the chamber on the committee. Thank you. Um, anybody, anybody else from council? Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to uh, to Lori Chadwick. Are any of the meetings going to be in the Harrow or Colchester area? That's my first question. Through you, Mr. Mayor, and the answer is yes. Okay, that's good. So we can make sure that people down there in, in the southern half of our municipality are invited. And also, did we send out letters to any other target groups? That's another question, because I think I've heard that we have, right? And I, I agree with Councillor Bjorkman. I don't see why we can't have a chamber member on there, but if we sent out letters to 15 target groups, then we might have 15 people knocking on our door because there was a lot of interest in this committee. Thank you. Anybody else from council? Uh, Laurie, did you? Sure, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. To respond to that question, Councillor Bondi, uh, and to you, Councillor Bjorkman, as well, these letters seeking um, applicants' interest were sent out uh, in the dozens. We sent out call outs, call out notices, call out letters, call out emails. We made cold call phone calls as well to industries. We we did not know what we were going to get. And so what we wanted to do was put the word out as much as possible on social media, through direct email, through direct letters, through direct phone calls to ensure that we had at a minimum 12 individuals. It worked in our favor and it worked, uh, you know, it, what, a, what an issue to have. We had so many applicants. Uh, and so that call-out letter, absolutely, Ms. Bandaru did send that call-out letter to the chamber, also to our um, Essex Centre BIA. We sent that uh, letter to all sectors and, you know, from the local um, construction association to the health unit to uh, the county representatives. It, it was sent out to dozens of folks. Um, if I may, <clears throat> we're at 13 now, aren't we? 13. I'm going to ask you, Lori, what's the difference if we go 13 to 14? I know we're at 12, okay? I, I, I'd love to see the Chamber under uh, Bill is making some very, very good points, and Councillor Van and Nolan made some excellent points here. So, we went from 12 to 13, okay? Does it really hurt if we add one more? That's what I'm asking. Would it hurt to add, add the chamber into uh, that panel? It, w it wouldn't hurt whatsoever. I think the number that we originally recommended in our terms of reference was a total of 12. When we were at the steering committee, I'm sorry, striking committee, it was recommended at that time that we increase to 13. We can certainly increase to 14. I looked to Mr. Auger, our town solicitor and clerk, to be able to help me through that, whether there is an opportunity for is us to even open up that committee. Uh, we would... Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, it would be a simple matter of a council resolution, and that resolution would provide for you know the appropriate amendment of the terms of reference. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Van Andolen. I'll move that. Okay, you'll move it. Uh, I have a seconder to move that. Councillor Bjorkman. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh, Councillor Bowman. Just a comment. I mean, the, the committee w was put together with a number in mind. We've already increased it by one. Personally, I think I'd rather see the committee get started and internally look to see if there's areas that they're missing and if they feel that there should be areas that added on, uh, maybe a recommendation coming from that committee uh, to do that. And I'm, I have no arguments with what Mr. Baker is saying, that that could be an area that needs to be looked at, but maybe that committee could be looking at it and internally deciding whether they they should because if you get a committee that's huge it gets very cumbersome and 
and maybe it needs some shifting as they move forward but uh, if you're adding bigger numbers you're creating problems as well so maybe the something the committee should do rather than council just my thought councillor van and only you had a motion on the floor so go ahead if you if you want to speak y yes uh, j just to my friend uh, councillor bowman um i don't see that we can start it without the most crucial part of our economy being at the table like i could see that making this this group larger is going to make it unwieldy and that's not wise but i don't think we can go backwards at this point we can't kick off somebody all we can do is add somebody um you know it's i, I just think that this important this the potential for this committee's recommendations for being having a huge impact on our industry is too important to to allow the committee to meet without industry being represented there i mean as this council knows well i'm, I'm very suspicious of the uh the climate change industry um it's not that I don't believe in climate change, as the uh, Essex News incorrectly quoted me today. Obviously, the climate is changing, but I have a lot of suspicions about the motivation behind the uh, behind these moves, and uh, I'm I'm afraid it's going to uh, it's going to cost jobs and and uh, impact our industry. And I think they just have to be at the table. Thanks. <clears throat> If we go to 14 members, and I've been on committees before, uh, I'll give you an example of the ACT Committee. Um, it always gets smaller and smaller. There's uh, so many people committed that they can meet once a month, but then when it comes around that once a month, uh, there's never that number there. So I, I think Mr. Baker is, uh, I think he has a lot to offer. I think, um, He'll give us a lot of input on that committee, so uh, I, I, I would recommend putting Mr. Baker on that committee. And you made a motion already, uh, Mr. Van, or Councillor Van Andel, and I need a seconder for that motion. We have a seconder. Oh, we have a seconder? So all in favor of that motion. I'm calling the question. All in favor. And I'm in favor. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Your Worship and, and Administration. Uh, the Chamber is committed to this committee and we look forward to being involved. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we still require a motion to uh, receive, receive the all the correspondence. Yeah, I need a motion to receive the. Uh, the correspondence, the rest of it. Uh, second ever, I need a seconder. Councillor Bjorkman, all in favor? It's carried, thank you. Item 12, committee meeting minutes, that the committee meeting minutes listed in 12.1, 12.2, and 12.3 all be adopted as presented. Need a motion, please. Uh, Councillor Bowman and I need a seconder here. Councillor Guerin, all in favor? Oh, pardon me, got a question. Councillor Verbeek. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I need to speak to two of the um, committee report. Um, minutes i'll just start off with the the coan one i just i just have to you know because we've all just received it i have to put a shout out to the hardworking people on that committee i'm only a, a year to that committee and and those people work really hard especially joanne bisnett um and i just wanted the rest of council to make note of the the coan's uh request to us for cameras and we're going to look at that in two weeks also um much more important our um is the police service board um, minutes. Um, I'm on the committee, uh, or I'm on the board, and our police service board uh, members, um, our role is governance of our police service. And so now with the, the current charges that are, are being laid, I need to ask if we can get some legal um, opinion on, on whether or not uh, we're breaking the code of conduct with the police service board because the charges are being laid by the police service that we govern. 
and also with Thursday's meeting, we are, have a representative from the Solicitor General's ministry attending for another matter, but I do need, I think we need to seek guidance before we uh, make any violations. I'll, I'll speak to that myself, Councillor. Uh, I decided myself today, I'm going to step aside of the police service until my issue is settled. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, because that was weighing heavy on me as to whether or not we were going to make any violations. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting on, on the committee with this charge against me. So I'm going to step aside until this is settled in court. I need to vote on the rest of correspondence. No, the committee oh, committee to, uh, to receive the uh, committee. Uh, okay, all, uh, Councillor Van Andoa and Councillor Garen, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Item 15 notices a motion. Uh, as as mentioned earlier, during adoption of published agenda 15.1.1 will come back for uh, consideration at the March 16th meeting. Um, the second item, as added to this evening's agenda as 15.1.2 is a notice of a motion for presentment only uh, by Councillor Bondi. Uh, that the, and the motion, notice of motion reads that council host a spring and fall open mic session to listen to our residents. That notice of motion will come back for council's consideration at the March 16th meeting. Mr. Mayor, I have a notice of motion I'd like to present as well. Okay, thank you, go ahead. It, it's a little wordy, so don't try to, don't write it down, Rob. I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, that the Council of the Town of Essex approve the attached resolution and discuss ways to appropriate the funds through but not limited to the sale of existing properties including part of the Colchester Schoolhouse property or other develop on developable properties in Colchester. Whereas the Town of Essex wishes to have a tourist information centre in the south end of town, preferably, preferably on Can Road 50, whereas businesses such as wineries, restaurants, artists, gift shops, outfitters, Golf courses, B and B's, breweries, on-farm retailers, flower shops, orchards, bike rentals, tour operators, etc., will benefit from the added exposure. And whereas the preference, the preferred location, being the old schoolhouse in Colchester Village, is years and hundreds of thousands of dollars away from use as a tourist information center, and whereas the Council of the Town of Essex understands that residential and commercial development in the south end of the town is accelerating. Therefore, the Council of the Town of Essex resolves to donate $100,000 to the John R. Park Homestead Education Centre in return for a designated tourist information centre named for the Town of Essex. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Yeah, that would be a long one to write down, so you're going to have to give with Rob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Item 16, reports and announcements from Council members. Uh, I'll start with Councillor Bondi. Councillor Van Endel. Councillor Bowman. Myself, I'll wait to last. Uh, Councillor Guerin. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, Sussex 73s are in their semifinals. Game four tomorrow night. We're down two games to one, so need all the public support we can get. I uh, also want to give a shout out to Glenn Mills and the Essex Ravens. Glenn and the Ravens are up for uh, numerous Westby nominations. Uh, Glenn for um, Coach of the Year and the Gendron Executive of the Year Awards. So congratulations, Glenn. The awards are March 10th at Kubota Club, and uh, I think they're still selling tickets if you guys are interested in going out there and helping out. Thank you, uh, Councillor Verbeek. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just I just want to mention that uh, Councillor Guerin and I were able to uh, travel to FEO um, uh, festivals, festivals and events of Ontario conference this week, last week, and uh, I think we're going to give a, a a much larger report. But I just I just want to say we're really excited about bringing some uh, uh, new ideas back for the Essex Fun Fest. Sadly, I don't ever see Essex count, Essex Fun Fest being a zero carbon footprint festival, but we could, we've learned some measures to move closer to that. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bjorkman. Okay, I'm going to get back to myself here. I just want to say something about the proxy issue. Last week I was charged with one count of encouraging someone to vote that was not entitled to vote. One. I repeat, one count. 
I want to ensure the public that I did not do this and I'm not guilty of knowingly doing anything wrong during the election. The people behind this have their reasons for attacking me and it's been going on since I got elected before I got elected and everyone knows why. I'm not guilty and that will be shown in court. In the meantime, I have no intentions of stepping down as mayor. I will not step down. I think this council is so proactive and we're in the right direction. We have huge development in this town and I'm not going to let that fail. The town is running very well, better than it has in years. And we have finally development happening again because investor, or investors trust. Trust us again because the old wars are over. We finally have all the staff positions in this town filled with good, young, ready to take this town forward. Young people are very, very knowledgeable about what they're doing and we're going in the right direction. We just passed our budget. In years, we never had a 0% tax. We do this year. We're, we're spending millions of dollars on both town centers. Harrow and Essex Center, both. This is going to be a great year for Essex with lots of progress and lots of new housing coming down. Don't let a few angry people spoil that because they want to make a good council look bad for their own political reasons. Thank you. Anything? Item 17 on the agenda, bylaws. 1888 for third and final reading being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings from the February 18th regular council meeting. Need a mover, please? Need a mover, please, uh, Councillor Van Andel and Councillor Bjorkman. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. For three readings this evening, bylaw 1890 being a bylaw to appoint a director of infrastructure services for the town of Essex. Need a mover, please, uh, Councillor Guerin and Councillor Verbeek. All in favor? Thank you. Go ahead. And bylaw 1893 for two readings this evening to confirm the proceedings of this March 2nd regular council meeting. Mover, please. Need a mover, uh, Councillor Bjorkman and Councillor Bowman. Thank you, and I need a mover to adjourn. Councillor Van Andel and Councillor Guerin. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, it was a good audience tonight, and I really appreciate you being patient. Thank you.